Uh, the end of this year, we've had uh, an incredible six month run um, through the second and third quarters of 2020. Um, as you look to the end of, of, of this year, is there anything you feel compelled to do within portfolios right now as, as we set up for, for 2021? Well, I think there will be opportunities, especially if, in fact, we get a disastrous November 3rd, um, you know, polling and election outcome. If there is a contested election or if there's a recount, then I think we'll get some opportunities to go long the markets in specific sectors uh, that we're recommending. Number one, I like Miles is industrials. I think industrials under either scenario, either Biden or a, a Trump two scenario, are more likely than not to get a, a, a bit of a boost from infrastructure spending and their economic recovery. Depending on who wins, I think you could see uh, a better bid for uh, non-conventional energy, you know, um, some of the more uh, democratic uh, leaning uh, aspects, which is, you know, um, uh, green energy, re uh, uh, I would say anything that doesn't have to do with uh, with oil or or um, or banks. Or, so those are what I would say would be the the top picks going into 2021. Again, I think it I think it matters quite a bit who takes home the prize on November 3rd or how long it takes to determine who is the ultimate victor. And so I guess in thinking about that, then we saw the market, you know, have such kind of a spotty September, I guess we could say this week has been better so far. In your view, was that about the markets starting to really price in the election? We talked about it for so long. Yeah, and then, sure. I mean, obviously the pandemic was a, a more pressing concern, but it, it seemed like we waited till Labor Day to to really start to to understand this was only eight weeks away. Yeah, I mean, we have, what, a 10% correction in the S&P in most recent trading. We thought that was a buy, so we told our clients to go along the broad S&P and proceed with a barbell strategy, which is, of course, married put options or the purchase of gold or the purchase of tips. I think these continue to be good strategies going forward, Miles. And again, depending on what the market brings us in this fourth quarter, if we get the stimulus package or not, if the Federal Reserve um, continues to fuel um, asset price um, surge or not, that could also uh, give us the opportunity to engage further in the markets in a very pragmatic way, which I think I think one must do because my view, Miles, is that this is uh, really a very um, stimulative environment, which over the course of the next few years, we will see inflation as a result. So I, that's why I'm telling our clients, look, you know, gold has retraced uh, very nicely after it's massively overbought a position a few weeks ago. It's a good time to go long, good time to go buy, buy tips, good buy, time to buy some, some put options, and even not a bad time to raise a bit of cash. And so we're talking about a number of the macro trades in the market. We haven't yet mentioned um, the dollar, which has had such a huge move um, over the last uh, couple of weeks. And we've talked about it a lot on this program is really influencing um, for for some time there day to day trading action. It seemed like everything was tied to, you know, a dollar rally or a dollar unwind. How do you see that fitting in uh, to the setup here? Well, I think long term, of course, the dollar is going to face a, a weakening trend. But over the near term, if we get a second bout of the virus or if we get some conflagration with China or a contested election, um, then the dollar will be it will be near term positive for the dollar. Not to mention, of course, that the DXY is more than half comprised of, of its relationship with the euro. So if we were to see um, London close down or Europe uh, revert into uh, economic closure, then, of course, it would be fuel for the positive for the dollar. Um, but I certainly think over the long term that the, the higher deficits, higher debt, higher debt, a monetary policy, that's certainly nothing but expansionary. And I think fiscal packages is, is, is in the docket. I mean, that's coming. That's going to be in the next few months or more. Um, and if one compares this, Miles, the reaction to COVID-19 versus, say, Lehman Brothers, um, or the European crisis, the fiscal response makes those things look like child's play. So I think we do have to be smartly positioned, but positioned to the extent that we continue to um, enjoy the wake of the Federal Reserve's asset purchase program without missing out on further opportunity costs. And so you mentioned, um, you know, that fiscal stimulus. And uh, I mean, I don't even I don't even know where the headlines stand now because it seemed like there was yeah. a new one every hour uh, during today's session. But you mentioned that it's likely to come to pass. I mean, as you think about yeah. excuse me here, if you think about, um, you know, next year for GDP growth, are, are you looking at a number um, five, six percent, something like the Fed uh, has kind of forecasted there? Well, I think economic growth is going to be spotty in 2020, especially given the base effects. So 1Q minus 6, 2Q, what, my, minus 30, 3Q is going to be probably plus 30 
uh, 4Q, maybe plus six. Um, then 2021, I think, is going to be more tumultuous than a lot of guys are anticipating. Um, I think that the economic recovery is not fundamentally based. And in fact, if you look at, for example, in the month of April, when the Fed first came with its stimulus checks, Miles, the important thing to realize is that a lot of the consumption has been fueled by these checks. Um, by the Federal Reserve zero rate policies and and by the um, and by you know the CARES Act and the multiple fiscal stimuli. So I think it's wrong to suspect that there won't be additional stimulus, given that that is what has taken us to these levels. And I think that the government is unlikely to risk uh, a retracement in the economy um, because we suddenly get fiscally responsible. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.